Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Before considering the octahedral and tetrahedral voids in a hexagonal closed pack crystal, let me revise some of the concepts we learnt with regard to the octahedral and tetrahedral voids in the cubic closed pack crystal. So, we saw that there are two kinds of voids of importance, this is the octahedron and the regular tetrahedron. We also saw that for instance, this is the position of the tetrahedral void within the common unit cell which is starting from one corner and we saw that within a unit cell there are 8 of such tetrahedra and we saw that the octahedron is located at a body center and also at the edge centers as the body center is related to the edge center by the phase centering translation which is half half 0. Now, we also saw that suppose I have a 2 tetrahedral voids and an octahedral void in the middle this combination can act like a primitive unit cell for the cubic closed pack crystal and therefore, this is the primitive unit cell. So, it consists of one octahedra in the center and two tetrahedra and they are joined along the body diagonal of the cube. Now, let us try to look at an alternate model of this uh, FCC voids, so that we can understand that how some of the octa tetrahedra and octahedra are packed within the unit cell. And the most important thing uh, for that I need I am going to use this model which I have got here. The most important thing we noted was that the octahedral void is shared between 4 unit cells. That means, within a unit cell you got only one fourth of an octahedral void. So, to illustrate that I have got the model in front of me here and here you can see these are my octahedral voids and you can see that this is one fourth of an octahedral void. So, how do I understand it is one fourth? I can put together 4 of these voids which are located here in front of me to make a regular octahedron. So, I put together 4 of these and I get a regular octahedron. So, in the unit cell I said there are uh, two positions I would like to distinguish for an octahedral void. One is the body center which I will take out these tetrahedral voids and show that actually the body center is the seat of an octahedral void here. So, this is my octahedral void which is located at the body center. These four positions are tetrahedral voids which are starting from these vertices of the cube, these corners of the cube and therefore, I got four tetrahedral voids. These are these blue faces you see are nothing but the uh, faces of the octahedral void which are sitting on these vertical edges. So, this edge, this edge as I said all edge um, centers are centers of octahedral void positions and similarly the bottom positions like you can see the bottom vertices also have octahedral voids at the at their center and I will this can equally be well be seen by the top edges here. So, let me do the repacking to show you how these tetrahedral and octahedral voids fit together. So, already I already have in position 4 quarters of tetrahedral octahedral voids at the 4 edges of which make the bottom face. The 4 vertical edges there are 4 quarters of an octahedral void already sitting in place. Then I place the 1 octahedral void in the body center. So, this is my octahedral void which goes in the body center. The next thing I do is put these tetrahedral voids in place. So, I got 4 of these tetrahedral voids here and therefore, I got total of 8 tetrahedral voids, 4 pink tetrahedral voids at the top, 4 pink at the bottom which we already saw when I removed these pieces and now these 4 quarters of octahedral voids which you can see here the there is the green faces are the faces which have been cut and therefore, when I join these green faces together I get my regular octahedron. So, I cut this into 4 quarters and put 1 quarter each in one of the edges and this octahedral void is shared between 4 unit cells. So, particularly suppose I take this octahedral void it is shared between this unit cell, the unit cell above it, the unit cell to the left of it and the unit cell below that. So, it is shared between 4 unit cells and therefore, the contribution of this octahedral void to this unit cell is just 1 fourth. So, I have, since I have 12 edges 
1 fourth into 12, 3 plus 1 at the body center. Therefore, there are 4 octahedral voids per cell, which matches exactly with the number of atoms in the cubic close pack structure, which is 4. Therefore, for every atom in the cubic close pack structure, I have 1 octahedral void. And as I saw, there are 8 tetrahedral voids, which implies for every atom in the cubic close pack crystal, I have 2 tetrahedral voids, and therefore, I have 8 tetrahedral voids. So, this void model is very illustrative in understanding that how voids themselves can be cut and associated with unit cells. So, this is an important model and uh, you need to keep this picture in view in understanding that what is the contribution of voids to a single unit cell when you do a counting. So, we had seen that the tetrahedral void in the cubic close pack crystal is a smaller void, but there are twice as many tetrahedral voids as octahedral voids and if you look at the size ratio of the uh, voids uh, atom which can sit in the void with respect to the radius of the atom at the lattice point, it is 0.225 for the tetrahedral void and 0.414 for the octahedral void. Later, later on we will actually try to compare this, uh, we will convert this radius ratio into actual dimensions for certain like for instance the ion crystal and then try to compare with the for instance the carbon atom which actually goes and tries to sit in some of these voids. So, in that case you will get a realistic feel of what these void sizes mean with respect to the atoms sitting in the lattice positions. So, therefore, this also tells you another important point that I need to know not only the total volume available, but how it is partitioned between that is the total volume available in the form of voids, but I also need how it, how it is partitioned between the various kinds of voids and how numerous those voids are. Okay. Now, let me take up the voids in the hexagonal close pack crystal and we had already mentioned that the hexagonal close pack crystal has identical voids as compared to the cubic close pack crystal. In other words, this an, it has a got an a regular octahedron and a regular tetrahedron as its voids. Now, what are the position of these voids in the unit cell? So, uh, you can see here in this uh, hexagonal close pack crystal unit cell that the tetrahedral void is formed between 3 atoms in the basal plane and the atom which is located in the mid plane. So, the position of this void would be for instance, uh, this is actually in the, in the centroid position, it is uh, one fourth way above. So, it is actually the void positions are written here as one third two thirds one fourth and one third two third three four. This is for the octahedral void and the coordinates for the tetrahedral void are written here. Now, it is um, so this tetrahedral void for instance will be located two third one third one eighth. So, this is the position of the tetrahedral void. Now, we will actually take up models to understand where these tetrahedral and octahedral voids are located and in this case in the case of the uh, hexagonal close pack crystal, it is actually very difficult to visualize especially the octahedral void. Now, the packing direction, the direction we are packing upwards is the uh, 0, 0, 0, 001 direction of the hexagonal close pack crystal. In other words, the direction of the packing of the close pack planes. So, we are packing the close pack planes in A B A B fashion in the direction which is the C direction. Now, um, the difficulty in visualizing the octahedral void comes from the following that actually if you look at the octahedral void, it is sitting not within a single unit cell, but within multiple unit cells. So, for instance, suppose when I want to visualize this octahedral void, it is sitting, so this is my unit cell, it is sitting between one unit cell, the second unit cell and the third unit cell. So, it is shared between three unit cells and this makes visualization of this octahedral void more difficult. The tetrahedral void is uh, easy to visualize, uh, it is for instance, this is one position of tetrahedral void and there is an equivalent position of the tetrahedral void, but now if you look at with respect to the orientation of the tetrahedron, this tetrahedra tetrahedron is oriented upwards, but if you look at the tetrahedron in this figure, it is oriented downwards. So, this tetrahedron is formed by the 3 atoms in the mid plane and suppose I am talking about say zinc crystal, this would be a 3 zinc atoms sitting in the mid plane and the atom which is shared between 3 unit cells. So, now therefore, this tetrahedron is shared between multiple unit cells and but and more importantly it is oriented the other way around as compared to the tetrahedron in this figure. As we will see that using models especially that the octahedron has got a single orientation in the hexagonal close pack crystal while the tetrahedron has got two orientations. Okay. And to repeat the voids are identical to those found in the cubic close pack crystal. So, there is no difference between the voids and this will become obvious when I show you the models which are used to illustrate the point. Now, 
Let me try to understand where the octahedral void is in the hexagonal closed pack crystal and how we can pack these octahedral voids and along with the tetrahedral voids to fill space. This exercise we had undertaken for the cubic closed pack crystal and this was an easy exercise because we could actually cut the uh, octahedral voids into one fourth, take them, put them along the edges and then include full tetrahedral voids along with one full octahedral void to fill an unit cell. Once the packing of a single unit cell has been achieved, then I know the packing of the crystal can be achieved. But as I pointed out, in the case of this uh, octahedral void in hexagonal closed pack crystal, this truncation is not an um, is not very illustrative. In fact, the truncation if you were to do will be down this plane and therefore, you will be cutting this octahedron in a, along this plane which goes down this direction and it is uh, difficult to visualize. So, for instance, this is my orientation of the octahedron with respect to two unit cells in the uh, hexagonal closed pack crystal. This shows an alternate view of that wherein I have included three atoms in the mid plane and three atoms in the basal plane. The, all the atoms as before are identical, they have been colored differently just for better visualization. So, looking down the 0, 0, 0, 1 direction, in other words the c direction, I see that this is the direction of my three fold in the cubic uh, hexagonal closed pack crystal. You can see that these three atoms come from the c equal to half plane and these three atoms come from the basal plane. So, now the way I start my packing is actually putting three octahedra together the way I have done here. So, these three octahedra are put together and the space left in between is what is colored in orange is an octahedra tetrahedron which is pointing upwards. Therefore, I can put my octahedra together and then put one tetrahedron in the middle of these three octahedron which is pointing upwards. Therefore, and further I can put other, another, other octahedra around this and go on to fill entire space, but now this is not filling of space with a single polyhedron, but with two platonic solids the octahedron and the tetrahedron. Right. These points will become uh, clearer when you actually take up the real models, wooden models which I have got here and as I told you these are the seat of the void models or these are the, this is the picture I use which I call the void model picture. Now, I would also like to know how many voids are present per cell and this calculation again can be performed uh, either based on the diagrams I am showing here or based on the void models I am using. So, the number of voids per atom in FCC and HCP, uh, we will see this that actually I can go from when I am making a layer by layer construction of void models that I can go from an FCC to an HCP crystal by a 60 degree rotation around the central atom. So, this I will show you using the model and the central atom which I am using has been marked here. So, as I just to revise what are these void models, void models are wherein atoms have been shrunk to points and I use a polyhedral shape to denote the coordination around a central void atom sitting in the void. Okay. Now, let us look at the number of uh, void spiral cell and voids per atom in the uh, tetrahedral and octahedral voids uh, in HCP. There are four, you can see these are the positions of the tetrahedral void. There are four voids per cell and the number of voids per atom is two. In octahedral, for octahedral voids, again there are two positions I have shown here. There are two voids per cell and there is one void per atom. Uh, Ravi has a question. Sir, I want to know the difference between voids per cell and voids per atom. Okay. Uh, as you know in FCC there are four atoms in the unit cell, right. Therefore, I may have for instance number of tetrahedral voids in an FCC or a cubic closed pack crystal is 8, but then you have four atoms in the unit cell. So, I divide them that 8 by 4 and get 2. So, that is what I am doing here. Okay. In the case of the uh, HCP you got two atoms per cell. So, that is clear. So, I divide the factor by 2. Now, um, in order to better visualize the position of these voids, I have certain other diagrams here and wherein the hexagonal unit cell has been split into various planes. So, this is plane for instance located at 0, this is a plane located at half, this is a plane located at 1 fourth, this is 3 fourth and 1. Similarly, there are there is a diagram on the right hand side which has been used to locate the positions of the tetrahedral void. So, you can see that if you look make such a diagram, then there are two octahedral void positions and these are on the centroid of the triangles and this is one in uh, in this plane and there is one in this plane. Similarly, when you look at the tetrahedral void, you can see that in the basal plane there is one center of the tetrahedral void here, then there is uh, this is not the basal plane, this is the plane which is located one, four, one eighth above. So, this is 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, this is 1 eighth of power and therefore, I have one tetrahedral void center sitting there. Similarly, in the plane which is this 1 8, 2 8, 3 8, I can see that there are centers of 4 tetrahedral voids. Then this is 4 8, 5 8, I can see again 4 tetrahedral voids and as you know this again would be repeated upwards in the plane which is above. So, now I can locate and this diagram is useful because it actually helps you in local localizing it with respect to the triangles, these triangular prisms. So, this, this is now my basal uh, unit cell and this is half triangle and I can locate them with respect to the centroid of the hexagonal unit cell. So, what is the difference between basal plane and single plane? No, the, these are all uh, basal plane what I mean these are all of course, stacking of basal planes, but this is shifted up above ok. This is in the C direction this is 1, 2, 3, 4. So, this is C 1 fourth ok. So, there are two octahedral voids one at C equal to 1 fourth and there is one at C equal to 3 fourth that is what I am showing there in a diagram like this. So, because as I pointed out look locating and associating these octahedral and tetrahedral voids in a hexagonal close pack crystal is somewhat difficult and visualizing them with respect to especially the unit cell. Um, in the cubic close pack crystal, there is a different kind of a problem, wherein you are packing along the one unknown direction typically the close pack layers, but you typically visualize a unit cell of the cubic close pack crystal along the 1 0 0 direction which is a 4 fold direction. You know as you do the packing of the close pack layers along the 3 fold direction or the 6 fold direction of the individual planes that is the one unknown direction of the cube, but you visualize this unit cell typically along the fourfold direction. While in the external close pack crystal, you draw and visualize these planes along the original six fold of these individual layers, which later on becomes as we saw uh, uh, a six three screw axis or a three fold. But even in this case, because of the strange orientation of the octahedron, typically when we draw an octahedron, we typically end up drawing an octahedron with the four fold upward. But in this case, I have to visualize an octahedron with a three fold upward. So, let me show with respect to a model for instance, actually it is related to the fact that the way we normally do octahedra, we normally end up drawing octahedra this way. It would have been equally instructive for us to draw an octahedron like this, that means with a three fold upward, right. But we rarely draw octahedra like this and therefore, it becomes difficult for us to visualize how we can draw an octahedron like this and how this octahedron is shared between unit cells in the conventional representation of the hexagonal close pack crystal that is where the issue is and that is why we require a certain amount of time to be spent in understanding this voids in the hexagonal close pack crystal. So, if once we start drawing octahedra like this and start visualizing um, along the three fold of this octahedron, then it becomes very easy for us to understand where the octahedron sits in the uh, hexagonal close pack crystal. So, uh, this is the octahedral voids in Q. So, how we can uh, see the, the this have a only one rotation one orientation and tetrahedral I have two orientation. So, we can see in crystals, uh, how we can see the model? Yeah, very good question and we will, I will show you that to you in when I take up the wood models. So, I will just do that for you next. Uh, so, the point I am trying to make here is that when you want to understand octahedral voids in hexagonal close pack crystals, you need to have multiple ways of understanding the same. You need to look at them using pictures like this, wherein I am drawing plane by plane and locating the centroids of these voids. I am using actually voids to these voids to do a space filling. So, there are many ways I can locate the same octahedra and tetrahedra. And this is very, very important because otherwise it is very difficult to uh, localize these octahedra and understand how they actually fill space to form the hexagonal close pack crystal. So, let us try to understand the position of the octahedral and tetrahedral voids which gives rise to the hexagonal close pack crystal and also the cubic close pack crystal. So, here I have my regular octahedron and my regular tetrahedron which have been placed along my direction of packing which is now the 0 0 0 1 packing in the hexagonal close pack crystal and the 1 1 1 direction of the cubic close pack crystal. Now, any such for instance when you take a tetrahedron actually represents two layers of atoms because there is one atom which has been reduced to a point here and there are three atoms which are here. Similarly, this also represents two layers of atoms because there are one layer of atoms at the bottom here and there is one more layer of atoms at the top. So, any such figure actually represents two layers of atoms wherein atoms have been shrunk to points as we do in a standard void model. So, let me start with an uh, tetrahedron and put three 
octahedrons around it or octahedra around it. Now, as you can see the central tetrahedron is in a upward orientation while all these three octahedra are in the same orientation. Now, I could continue in the plane by putting more and more of these octahedra which all will happen to be in the same orientation. Now, I have got voids here between these octahedra wherein I can put additional tetrahedra in the upward orientation like this. So, so far I have got all my tetrahedra in the upward orientation and they sit here, 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 here and one right at the center. So, now further I can of course, put a tetrahedra right here also and propagate this order throughout my uh, plane, uh, this two dimensional plane which actually as you might note is actually two planes of atoms because this, there is one plane which is the plane of the paper and there is an additional plane here where there are atoms. Now, when I want to complete this la la layer, two layers of atoms, I will have to put additionally this tetrahedra in the second orientation which is oriented downwards. So, this is my second variation of the tetrahedron and it is downwards. So, I have constructed two layers of atoms which now can extend to infinity. To make another layer above this, I have two options. So, I have an octahedron for instance and I can put, so I call say this position of the octahedron as the A position, then this would be a B position. Now, suppose I put a tetrahedron, an octahedron on top of an octahedron, then I would see that this is my A position, this is my B position but this position is exactly above the original position which is a position therefore, I will get an a b a. So, I am putting octahedron octahedron therefore, I will get an a b a b kind of a packing. In other words, whenever I put an octahedron on an octahedron to make the se second layer of voids which would actually constitute three layers of atoms, then I would get an a b a b kind of packing which would give me the hexagonal close pack crystal. Now, instead of doing putting an octahedron on an octahedron, suppose I put a tetrahedron on an octahedron like this, then I will get an A, then a B and this is a new position which was not there in the two layers of atoms below this and therefore, this would be a C position and therefore, whenever I put an tetrahedron on an octahedron, I have got an A B C A B C kind of packing. In other words, I would get the cubic close pack crystal packing. So, let me start off by putting and taking an octahedron trying to make the third layer of atoms and put an octahedron on top of an octahedron existing octahedron. So, this is my position an octahedron on an octahedron. Similarly, I can take an octahedron put it on this existing octahedron. I can take another octahedron and put it on this existing octahedron. Now, you can see that these octahedra are, are actually uh, leave a hole in the center which wherein a tetrahedron can fit and they also leave holes here in this positions wherein additional tetrahedra can fit. I can do that. Now, an important point to be noted at this stage is that suppose I am looking at a central atom, an atom which is located here. Then using these void models, I can calculate the number of atoms which come together at this void. In other words, number of voids per atom, I can make a calculation very easily. So, first suppose the atom sitting here would be shared between 1, 2, 3 octahedra which are below this and there are 1, 2, 3, 4 tetrahedra. When I make the next layer as you will, as we were trying to do just now, then you will have 3 octahedra in the plane above and there will be 4 tetrahedra. In other words, 3 plus 3, 6 octahedra come together at a single vertex in the hexagonal close pack crystal and as we shall see this number remains unaltered when you go from an hexagonal close pack crystal to an cubic close pack crystal. So, 1, 2, 3 octahedra in this plane plus 3 above, 6 octahedra coming together at each atom, 1, 2, 3 in bottom orientation, 1 in the top orientation, 4 tetrahedra up here, 4 tetrahedra above. So, 8 tetrahedra coming together at a vertex in that means which is an atom in the cubic close pack and the hexagonal close pack crystals. This could have equally well been visualized by an alternate models which we have considered before. For instance, we have mo a model like this here and I have an atom here and I can uh, for instance take this atom and I will use the camera above to actually show you that for instance there are 8 we have seen here 3 
1, 2, 3 tetrahedra, 4 here. So, th there will be 8 unit cells and there are 8 tetrahedra coming together. As we saw, this is 1 tetrahedron here, 8 of them. Similarly, octahedra, there is 1 from here, 1 from which is shared between these unit cells. Similarly, you can see that we can visualize using alternate models, this calculate the number that there are actually 6 tetrahedra or 6 octahedra coming together at a vertex. So, let us return to the void models once again. Now, let me make the second layer of atoms by putting an octahedron on or a third layer of atom, the second layer of voids to make an void model or a void space filling model. So, I got my layer 1 of atoms here, the layer 2 of atoms here, the layer 3 of atoms above. So, you got 3 layers of atoms and 2 layers of voids and now this structure can be propagated through all to actually get the hexagonal closed pack crystal and this is an hexagonal closed pack crystal because we started off by putting an octahedron on top of an octahedron. So, this is how we started off. Now, let me do the other alternative which will lead to the cubic closed pack crystal which is by putting an tetrahedron on top of an octahedron or equivalently I can put an octahedron on top of this tetrahedron. So, I put an tetrahedron on top of this octahedron, an octahedron on top of this tetrahedron. So, this is a tetrahedron, I put an octahedron there and this is a tetrahedron here, this is my another octahedron, this is my cubic closed pack structure and this is related to my hexagonal closed pack structure by actually a twist right about the central atom and the twist will occur along this axis and how do I visualize the twist? If I try to twist all these atom, all these voids they will fall down. So, let me do the twist with a single pair of voids. In other words, to go from a tetrahedra on top of an octahedra to an octahedra on top of a tetrahedra, of course, I could do a translation like this, wherein I for instance, I take an octahedra on top of an octahedra, but more precisely I can do this twist around this. So, now what happens? I get a tetrahedra on top of a tetrahedra, an octahedra on top of an octahedra and I did this rotation about this axis for instance. Equivalently of course, I could do another operation so that I can get an octahedra on top of an octahedra and a tetrahedron on top of a tetrahedron. So, this can be done and you can see these two structures are closely related as far as the voids goes. In terms of the coordination polyhedron, we had seen that it is a cube octahedron in the case of the uh, cubic closed pack crystals and in the case of the external closed pack crystal it was a twin cube octahedron and we have coordination models which lead which can which reflects this twinning operation. So, we have a void model here and let me summarize once again the salient features of this void model that this model is very useful especially in making calculation as I said number of voids per atom right. So, in other words how many uh, suppose now I have certain atom for instance a carbon atom sitting in the octahedral void I would know that how many carbon atoms can sit around a central atom for instance of iron in the cubic closed pack crystal. So, those kind of calculations are very easy to make with this kind of a void model and additionally it helps you visualize the voids the way they can fill space and I also pointed out that the same set of voids the regular octahedron and the regular tetrahedron can be used to fill uh, make the cubic closed pack crystal as well as the hexagonal closed pack crystal. So, there are these void models. I have here a model of the hexagonal closed pack crystal wherein I have three layers of atoms, the basal layer, there is one layer of atoms in the middle which as I had pointed out goes part of the motif and there is a third layer above. And here I want to illustrate the presence of the octahedral and the tetrahedral voids. Let me start the easier of the two which is the tetrahedral void and as I pointed out the tetrahedral void is made by three atoms in the basal plane and an atom which is sitting above. So, let me lift this model up and show from a different camera angle the same thing. So, here I got my tetrahedral void which I want to show from a different direction. So, this is my tetrahedral void. So, there are three atoms in the basal plane and one atom in the C equal to half plane which constitute my tetrahedral void. Now, where is the unit cell of this crystal? So, I can consider my unit cell as this rhombic prism. This is my unit cell and therefore, um, this tetrahedral void for instance lies completely within the unit cell, but I can locate an alternate tetrahedral void whose orientation as we saw is opposite to that of this, this tetrahedral void and that can be formed by this atom which has been painted red and blue the one in the basal layer and these three atoms which are in the C equal to half plane. So, these are the three atoms one red and two blue 
and one which is painted half red and half blue. Putting together these four, I would get a tetrahedral void which is pointing downwards. Equivalently, I could locate another tetrahedral void which is pointing upwards by taking this atom and these three atoms. That means, I take this brown atom, this red atom, this blue atom and this blue atom. So, this will form the base triangle base and this will be my fourth which will form the tetrahedron. As you know tetrahedron is nothing but a triangular pyramid. So, I have this tetrahedron right here. So, I can have two tetrahedrons which are which have centers along this vertical edge and since this vertical edge is no different from the other vertical edges like this and this therefore, I would they will also be seats of centers of tetrahedral voids. So, right here at along this edge I have one tetrahedron pointing upward and one pointing downward. Now, this model is very illustrative to understand the position of the octahedral void. So, now let me take an equivalent unit cell for instance this unit cell formed by these four atoms 1, 2, 3, 4. Similarly, on the basal plane there is one brown colored atom, one blue colored atom here, another blue colored atom here and an atom which is colored half blue, half red. So, these four along with these four corners here, vertices here would form the rhombic prism which is the unit cell for the hexagonal close pack crystal with this atom at c equal to half contained within the unit cell. Now, the octahedral void is as I pointed out shared between more than one unit cell in fact, three unit cells. So, now there is this unit cell which contains one atom which belongs to octahedral void, there is this another unit cell which contains one more and there will be an equivalent unit cell here which contains one more atom. In other words, this octahedral void which is shown here with this vertices colored blue. So, there are three triangular uh, atoms which form a triangle which are sitting in the basal plane, three in the mid plane which are the six vertices of the octahedron and out of this these three in the basal plane all set uh, are contained within of course, uh, have at least some part of it within this unit cell, but there are these th two which lie completely outside the unit cell. Therefore, it is it this makes a little difficult to visualize the octahedron with respect to the standard conventional unit cell. So, let me go over this process again. So, I got my tetrahedral void which can be contained within completely within a unit cell. Of course, I could also visualize other tetrahedral voids which lie between unit cells and I have this octahedral void which is always shared between the conventional unit cells. So, this is pointing uh, this direction of course, as you know is or this is my seat of the 6 3 screw axis. In other words, this is the A position, this is my B position and the C position is completely vacant which is the seat of the 6 3 screw axis and along the center along that axis lies my octahedral void and the octahedral void as you can see can is has these atoms as its vertices. And since these voids are actually been the solid models of the voids are actually shrunk down versions of this actual polyhedron and this has been done for just better visualization. You should remember the actual void would be formed by these faces which are right here these full complete faces, but these are just shrunk down versions for better visualization of the centers of the voids. Okay. So, I have this unit cell having part of this void, the, this alternate unit cell having some part of the void and this a third unit cell having some part of the void. So, these three unit cells together form the complete uh, have part put together those parts I get the complete octahedral void which is located with this three fold axis upwards. So, this model is a very illustrative model and let me take a little time out to actually show this model from various perspectives. So, this you can see this is a model in this perspective you can go around this a little bit to actually visualize the voids. And let me rotate it around so that I can actually show you the C axis. Using this opportunity, let me show you an alternate uh, model for the position of the voids and the kind of spheres which can sit in those voids. So, let me show how and we have seen a model like that before for instance. Now, this is my set of spheres here transparent glass balls which have been used to fill the unit cell in a cubic close packed crystal. So, I got these void models here and let me take out central sphere and put a void this is my. So, I want to show the relative sizes of the atoms. So, you can see that 
the size of the atom which can sit in the void is considerably smaller than the size of the atom which goes into the lattice. You can see that the relative size is clearly. So, let me put that in the central void position as you know this is my octahedral void position and therefore, I have put an atom which goes and sits in the octahedral void. So, that is my atom. To show an atom which actually sits in the tetrahedral void, I have got an alternate sphere here and you can see that this atom is even smaller than the atom which goes into the octahedral void. So, let me show the relative sizes. So, this is my atom which goes into the octahedral void which is a bigger void in the cubic close pack crystal. This is my atom which goes into the tetrahedral void which is smaller and of course, I have my sphere which is larger than both of those and I know my seat of the tetrahedral void and let me carefully try to put it here uh, to put an atom into the tetrahedral void. This is a slightly difficult task because the atom would tend to fall into the lower tetrahedral void or this sphere. So, it does not matter. So, let me try to get it into the So, this is my tetrahedral void where my atom can sit. Okay. So, let me see. It's so, anyhow, so the um, point I want to make here is to actually for you to get a feel of the relative sizes of the atoms. So, let me maybe try to put it in this tetrahedral void which may be slightly more successful if I can pull out this atom. Yeah, so, this is my position of the tetrahedral void. So, I manage that. So, you can see that now I have an atom sitting in the tetrahedral void which can be seen which is a smaller atom and there is an additional atom right at the center which is sitting in the octahedral void. So, this is my tetra center of the tetrahedral void, this is my center of the octahedral void and you can clearly see that relative sizes of these three spheres and I got my space filling solid here. So, uh, you have to remember this when you are actually trying to make interstitial alloys which we will study later that since these spheres which can fit into these voids are rather small, uh, the solubility of some of these are very limited. So, let us once again use this uh, transparent sphere models to understand the relative sizes of the atom which can sit in the octahedral and tetrahedral voids in the BCC crystal. So, I have shown here two unit cells of the BCC crystal wherein I have atoms like this which sit in the body centering positions and these atoms sit on the vertices of the cube. Of course, I could grow this crystal further by putting more of these spheres along the vertical direction. So, I can this would again be body centering positions. Now, the two uh, the size of the relative size of the two atoms which can sit in these vertices are shown here and I would not take uh, um, the risk of putting them into the spheres because they will tend to fall down into wrong places. So, this is my largest sphere which can sit in the octahedral void, this is my largest sphere which can sit in the tetrahedral void. So, let me place them down here for relative sizing. So, I got my three sizes. So, you can see that the size of the spheres which can fit into these octahedral tetrahedral voids are rather small. So, this is the uh, this is as we saw 0 0.15, 0 0.29 and this is my full size sphere which is at the lattice point. Now, let me try to locate the relative uh, positions of these voids. The octahedral void which is a smaller void and as we saw that the atom sitting in the octahedral void only touches the atoms which are above and below it. So, the oct center of the octahedral void is right between this two body centering positions which is right here or equivalently between this body centering atom and an atom which I place above. So, right between these two kind of atoms is my octahedral void position wherein this kind of a sphere would sit. Now, the tetrahedral void is as we saw located between if you take a mid plane like this it is located if you take a half mid plane then it is located at the center of that half mid plane. So, in other words my tetrahedron which is formed is formed between 1, 2, 3, 4 this is my vertices of the tetrahedron and as we saw this is not a regular tetrahedron this is a distorted or a non regular tetrahedron. So, let me locate my octahedra. So, let me take say for instance this sphere. So, octahedron is made of this central sphere 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and this is my sixth. So, this is my uh, octahedron which is made by 6 atoms and my tetrahedron is made by 1, 2. So, 1 in this body centering position, 1 in this body centering position and this 3, 4. So, this is my tetrahedral void. So, and relative sizes as we saw before are these which can sit in these relative positions. So, let us look at the voids in a BCC crystal and as we had pointed out uh, there are no regular shaped voids in other words the uh, voids which are 
um, present in the BCC crystal are not one of the five platonic solids. As we shall see, you can call them distorted or I would prefer the word is non-regular octahedral and non-regular non tetrahedral voids which are present in the BCC crystal. And we shall see that I, I would rather use the word non-regular rather than irregular because or um, distorted because we shall see there is some symmetry to these uh, non-regular tetrahedron and the octahedron as well. An important point to be noted and we will actually try to make some calculation based on this concept is the fact that the distorted or the non-regular octahedral void is actually not even an octahedral void. In other words, an atom sitting in the of the right size sitting in this octahedral void actually will be touching only two atoms and this is an important point to be noted. And very surprising thing which is coming out of this analysis is the fact that in BCC iron carbon sits prefers to sit in the smaller octahedral void and we will try to understand the reasons of this for this based on the uh, configurations around the voids. So, where are the voids in the BCC crystal? So, there are two kinds of voids as we saw the one on the right is the non-regular octahedral, one on the left is the non-regular tetrahedral void. So, let me consider first the tetrahedral void. The tetrahedral void is made up of uh, the edges are two different kind of lengths. The, the tetrahedron consists of this and this two lengths which have a length a which is nothing but the edge length of the unit cell. Additionally, it has got these four which are marked in green and the length of this uh, edge is root 3 a by 2. In other words, it is half the body diagonal of the cube. So, even though it is uh, a non-regular tetrahedron, it has not been fully distorted and as you can see, you can have a two-fold direction which is going along the centers of these edges. Now, um, the three-fold directions have been lost because of the distortion. Now, where is this center of this tetrahedral void with respect to the unit cell? and let me locate it for instance using this cube. So, the tetrahedral void suppose I have my face like this, I take half my face. Okay. So, this is my half my face which is a rectangle, it is located in the centroid of that rectangle. So, I have a model here to show you where the tetrahedral void is located. So, let me show you this wireframe model. So, I have these two unit cells right here. So, I have I can divide this unit cell into two halves along the mid plane like this. And now, if I uh, take uh, the central uh, face which is shared between these two cubic unit cells, then I would note that it is at the center of that half rectangle which is of the made of this face. And as I pointed out, this tetrahedron is made up of two lengths, one length which is red which is shown here which is a and this blue length is root 3 a by 2 and this is my two fold axis of this tetrahedron. So, how many of these tetrahedron would come at each face? As you know, this cubic unit cell has a fourfold axis which goes along the 0, 0, 1 direction and that means, if this is one tetrahedron void, there will be four of them in each face. And how many unit cells will this tetrahedron be shared between? It will be two unit cells because half of that would lie within this unit cell, half of that would lie in the unit cell above as it has been shown in this figure that each one of these tetrahedral voids is shared between two unit cells. So, each of these faces again would have a uh, similar kind of uh, configuration of four tetrahedral voids which are shared between two unit cells. Where are now I need to locate the octahedral void and as I pointed out before this is a non-regular octahedral void and even though as I pointed out before these voids are called octahedral they actually have only six atoms at their vertices. So, the octahedral void is located at the face centers. So, when I have two, two unit cells and this is my octahedral void, the center of the octahedral void is at the face center. Now, again this octahedron made of two edge lengths, the length which is marked in brown is a and the length which is marked in green is root 3 a by 2, the exactly the two kinds of length which were involved in the tetrahedral void. Now, if I try to put an atom at the center, then this length from the center of the void to the atom which has been current colored orange, noting again that the orange color is just to distinguish uh, the position and all atoms are identical in this BCC crystal. Now, this distance is a by 2, while on the other hand this distance is 
from here from this vertex to the center is root 2 a by 2. This is a by 2 and that is root 2 a by 2. In other words, if I put an atom of correct size fitting within this uh, octahedron, then it will be only touching the atoms which are up and above and below this void. In other words, it will not be touching the 4 in the mid plane. In other words, this octahedral void actually turns out to be a linear void. If the atom we are putting in is of exactly that size which can fit into this void without causing distortion. Now, what is the relative size of these voids with respect to the uh, host atom sitting in the lattice position? For the tetrahedral void, uh, the ratio of the void size to the atom radius size is 0.29. For the octahedral void, it is about approximately half that which is r void by r atom is 0.155. As you can see, these numbers are smaller than the void size numbers which he had noted for the cubic close pack crystal. So, what are the numbers we had noted for the cubic close pack crystal? We saw that the tetrahedral void was 0.225 and the octahedral void is 0.414. So, we can see that the this especially this octahedral void is considerably smaller than any of the previous voids we have encountered. And if this position is a cent seat of the uh, octahedral void, then I can add any of the body centering translations to land up with other equivalent positions for the octahedral void. For instance, I could add for instance to half of 0 to this position which is 0, 0 half and I will land up with um, all BCC translations to land up with equivalent identical points or sorry this is to be half of half which is a body centering translation. Now, let me locate the <coughs> so in other words I will land up with an octahedral void position which is at the center of an edge which is 0, 0 half. So, that means if I have an octahedral void located at half of 0 then the center of the edge which is related by a body centering translation to this position is also a center of an non regular octahedral void. So, I have octahedral voids in one which looks at the center of the unit cell and all which look at the edges. So, with the important point to note this octahedral void is actually shared between two unit cells as you can see above and below while this octahedral void is shared between four unit cells this one the one above one to the left and one below that. So, we have shown I have shown only the octahedral and tetrahedral voids located within on a single face of the unit cell, but we have to remember there are all the other symmetry translations, symmetry operations of the cube or the 4 by m 3 bar 2 by m symmetry operations will give me all the equivalent positions of the octahedral and tetrahedral voids. So, uh, we have the distorted tetrahedral void, we got uh, 4 by 2 which is the one which is uh, one located within uh, we saw here this kind of a thing and there are 6 of these faces. So, I have 12 of these tetrahedral voids per cell. As far as I am talking about the octahedral voids, they are located in the face center and they have a contribution of half. So, there is 6 phases, half contribution there are 3 and there is 1 at the edge center which is located here and its contribution to the unit cell is 4. I have 12 edges, so 12 by 4 is 3. So, I have 3 plus 3 totally 6 voids per cell. So, I have 6 octahedral voids per unit cell in an uh, BCC crystal. I have 12 tetrahedral voids per cell in the BCC crystal and as there are 2 atoms in every unit cell of the BCC crystal I can divide this 12 by 2 to get 6 voids per atom in the BCC crystal and 6 that is 6 tetrahedral voids per atom and there are 3 octahedral voids per atom in the BCC crystal. Now, having seen the relative sizes of these voids the smaller being the octahedral and the larger being the tetrahedral void I would like to again just confirm this by a calculation that actually this is the size of the tetrahedral void. So, let me do a calculation that where is my tetrahedral void located? It is located at the centroid of the rectangle which is made by half this common face. So, if I look at the tetrahedron here and I look at the centering central of the tetrahedron position C, then I can draw a right angle triangle C M O or O C M and the o length O C can be got by Pythagoras theorem to be root 5 5 4 A which is nothing but. So, the O C is where the uh, atom sitting in the tetrahedral void will be touching the atom sitting in the lattice position. So, that will be equal to r plus x. For the BCC structure I know that the atoms touch along the body diagonal therefore, root 3 a is equal to 4 r in other words a is equal to 4 r by root 3. I can substitute this value for r 
So, r plus x becomes root 5 by 4, 4 r by root 3, which is r plus x from this equation. Therefore, x by r is root of 5 by 3 minus 1, which is 0.29. So, using simple geometry, I can actually ca calculate the size of the atom uh, with respect to the size of the uh, atom sitting in the uh, parent lattice, which can fit into this tetrahedral void. So, similarly, I can make of course, a calculation for the octahedral void and noting in this case that my atom is now be touching along the O B direction. So, my atom along the O B direction which is A by 2 which is nothing but 0.5 A and that is equal to O B is equal to R plus x because now the uh, x atom which is my uh, foreign atom or the atom sitting in the interstitial position would be touching the atom sitting in the parent lattice and that is equal to A by 2. And so, therefore, R x R plus x equal to 4 R into 2 root 3. Now, this is O A for instance, this O A is my uh, root 3 uh, root 2 A by 2 and I know for B C C crystal root 3 A equal to 4 R. Therefore, I can calculate my x by R to be 2 root 3 by 3 minus 1 which is 0.1547. Now, again this is of course, very simple kind of geometry which I am applying here to understand my uh, kind of species which can sit in the tetrahedral and octahedral voids and a student is just requested to go through these calculations once again to convince himself to uh, these that these calculations are right and also to understand the relative configuration of the atoms when they sit in the octahedral and tetrahedral voids. Now, um, as I pointed out, um, uh, we will consider the special example of carbon in iron to under, uh, and the relative size of the atoms and especially uh, when you are talking of a carbon sitting in BCC ion with, a, with respect to a carbon sitting in FCC ion to understand how the solubility for instance would be affected by these relative size of the voids and which void the carbon atom preferentially sits in. So, in the case of the FCC it is very clear that the larger void is the octahedral void and when I add carbon to gamma ion which is the FCC ion, uh, the carbon would sit there and there is no confusion regarding that. But in the case of the carbon in BCC ion, as I said it surprisingly carbon sits in the smaller uh, octahedral void which I pointed out in some sense is actually a linear void and we will try to understand why this is so. Now, uh, however, we notice that with respect to both the voids which are present in BCC even the largest of the voids, the voids are smaller in BCC. This is uh, somewhat surprising because we know that the BCC is an open structure but we already seen the number of voids in BCC is more than that in FCC. In other words, BCC has more number of smaller voids. Even though there is larger amount of space available in BCC crystal, it is divided up into smaller sized voids and that is why my carbon actually finds it difficult to sit in any one of these voids which are actually small and this would affect its solubility and we know that carbon actually the solubility at room temperature and alpha ion is extremely small, it is of the order of 0.00. 1 percent or something very small and the gamma ion which is found at higher temperature actually has a much higher solubility for carbon. So, to repeat this important point, we know that BCC is an open structure. So, for at first glance we would assume that actually we will have a higher solubility of carbon in BCC ion, but when carbon tries to sit in the BCC voids, the distortion cost is more and the solubility of carbon in ion is smaller. This is because the number of voids in BCC or the total space available in voids is actually split up into smaller number of smaller size larger number of voids and this is why the my solubility of carbon in BCC ion is smaller. Of course, this is one of the reasons there are other uh, reasons which would come up from um, various other aspects which we need to consider in detail, but this is sort of an first level understanding of the solubility of carbon in ion. So, let us look at the uh, relative sizes of the voids and especially with respect to the size of the ion atom. The first thing I would point out in this transparency is the size of the ion atom itself. For instance, the size of the ion atom in the cubic close pack crystal is 1.292, this is of course, an approximate value which is different from the size of an ion in the uh, BCC crystal. So, this is something to be noted that means that the size you calculate is the also dependent on the crystal structure. Now, of course, what is the size of an atom, how do we calculate it is a subject by itself and uh, typically I would uh, assume a spherical distribution of electron probability and use some value to truncate uh, to get some value of the radius of the atom. 
but I need to note this important point that the radius is not equal in these two crystal structures. And I have drawn a sphere here to indicate the size of the ion sphere which sits in the FCC crystal and also that which sits in the BCC crystal of course, which are approximately similar. Now, let me locate the size of the carbon atom and the size of the carbon atom happens to be 0.77 angstroms which is drawn here to relative scale with respect to the green iron shown atom. Now, size of the octahedral void in FCC crystal is also shown here for relative size and as you can see the carbon atom is bigger than the octahedral void size. Now, so this is my octahedral void side which happens to be 0.534 angstroms while the carbon atom is 0.77 angstroms therefore, it is the void is smaller than the size of the carbon atom. So, even though as I pointed out the solubility of carbon in iron gamma ion is more which is the FCC form or the cubic close pack form of iron even then we note that the void is not even enough to fit a carbon atom. The void just happens to be good enough to fit for instance an hydrogen atom which has a diameter of about 0.46 angstrom. So, that can fit into an octahedral void, but if you take any other atom like a nitrogen which is itself a small atom or our carbon which is of technological importance this would not comfortably fit that in other words when I try to put carbon into FCC ion um, there will be solubility, but then it this solubility is limited by the kind of distortion it causes to the lattice. Of course, we are initially we consider only dilute concentrations of carbon in gamma ion. When we take up the BCC uh, crystal then we see that the void sizes are considerably smaller this is my now my octahedral void which is smaller and and the tetrahedral void which is bigger is also smaller than the octahedral void or any of the atoms. So, my void of my tetrahedral void in BCC is about 0.364. So, uh, which means that even an hydrogen atom cannot fit into this void. So, it will cause distortions when it tries to fit into this void. Well, definitely the octahedral void is even smaller and it is uh, diameter will be 0.195 angstrom. So, its radius is this and therefore, uh, its radius is 0.195 angstrom and therefore, it is smaller than the um, tetrahedral void and considerably smaller than the carbon atom. Now, let us try to uh, answer this question which he had raised that uh, why is that the carbon goes and sits in the octahedral void and the answer turns out that the when you when I try to put a sphere which is now my carbon atom into this it has two options now the tetrahedral void which is a larger one or the octahedral void which is a smaller one. So, it can choose one of the two and I pointed out that it actually goes and sits in the smaller of the two. The reason is that when it sits in the octahedral void and it is definitely bigger than the octahedral void, but still it needs to only push two atoms out of place when it sits in the octahedral void. While if it sits in the tetrahedral void it is actually touching all the four atoms and as the carbon atom is bigger than the tetrahedral void it will be actually pushing four atoms outward. So, the distortion it causes to the lattice and hence the energy it causes to the system is larger if the carbon atom tries to sit in the tetrahedral void while if it is in the octahedral void it can only push out two atoms and try to make space for itself. So, uh, of course, I will try to make an ideal calculation to see till what size will it end up only pushing two atoms. So, this is of course, an ideal geometrical calculation which is highly simplified when it when you try to push um, two atoms outward that will lead to a chain of other distortions which will end up actually squeezing this octahedral void shape, but I am ignoring all that just to show that there is uh, considerable space available if you are willing to tolerate pushing only two atoms. So, uh, as before I consider now my octahedral void in the BCC structure and I choose my 110 plane to illustrate uh, the point I want to make. The 110 plane I have chosen because along the 110 plane which is shaded green here the I can draw my 111 direction which starts from this point A and goes to the opposite body diagonal here and the atoms in the BCC crystal touch along those direction. So, my atom which is sitting in the vertex here I have the atom which is sitting in the body centering position and the atom which is sitting in the opposite vertex. So, again I have overlaid all the atoms here on this 111 plane and this being my 110 111 direction and this direction now is my 110 direction which is nothing the 110 direction the connecting a vector to the opposite vertex here. Therefore, I have my 111 plane here and sorry 11 
0 kind of plane here with 1 1. So, the actual plane would be 1 1 bar 0 and I have a 1 1 0 vector lying on this plane. So, if an atom which is now compared to the size would be 0 0.15 the atomic size the fraction would be here then it would be touching only these two atoms will not be touching the re remaining 4 which is 1 2 are shown in this plane the remaining 2 would be on this vertex and that vertex and they have not been shown in this diagram. So, they will be touching only the two atoms which are colored orange here. Now, assuming the ideality it can expand till it reaches a diameter which is shown in dotted line without having to push these two atoms. So, this is sort of an ideal geometrical calculation once again I need to emphasize that it can continue to you can continue to put larger and larger spheres into this small hole here which is shown here in the middle without actually having to push these two blue atoms. So, this is what I was trying to say and this is the reason that the carbon actually wants to sit in this smaller uh, octahedral hole, but again I need to point out that these are simplified first level uh, sort of uh, understanding and a deeper understanding would come from a more detailed calculation wherein you actually try to fit atoms of this and make an ab initio calculation of how, how, how that will affect the energy of the system. So, now let me try to calculate what is the size from O to x and ignoring of course, for that I will ignore the atom sitting in B um, and assuming the interstitial atom touches till the atom touches at A. So, this is what I will try to make a calculation. So, now my O A is R plus x A. So, this is my atom at x which is now the expanded uh, atom is equal to root 2 A by 2 and R plus x A is equal to 2 root 6 by 3 R. Now, in terms writing in terms of R which is for the BCC crystal. So, I can calculate x A by R to be 0 0.6329. Okay. Now, trying to translate this into real dimension my O x will be uh, point for the that is for the BCC iron crystal is 0 0.796 angstroms while I know my carbon atom which is so this is 0 0.796 atom. So, let me compare it to the size of the carbon atom which is, is of the size of 0 0.77 atom angstroms. So, this O x is larger than the size of my carbon atom and if you compare this with O y which is a smaller number is 0 0.195. So, I can see that if a, a larger size sphere is put into the BCC crystal, it would rather go and sit in the octahedral void and push out two atoms which would cost my system lower energy uh, and it will it can continue to put do so till it start touching these atoms which are sitting in A kind of position which have been say shaded blue. And this explains uh, two things of course, why the uh, carbon atom goes and sits in the octahedral void but additionally it also points out why the solubility of carbon is extremely small in PCC iron. So, to summarize uh, this explains this x, x, x by r ratios between 0 0.15 and 0 0.63 and again pointing out these are some sort, sort of a simplified calculation the interstitial atom has to only push two atoms and uh, therefore, it would go and sit in the octahedral void. So, uh, with this we have made a sort of an uh, overview of all the voids which are present in the cubic close pack crystal, the body centered cubic crystal and the hexagonal close pack crystal. And we saw that for the uh, CCP and the HCP crystal the voids are identical and they are the regular tetrahedron and the regular octahedron. The BCC crystal has larger um, space of void, but is divided into smaller voids which are large in number and this is an important point to be noted. And this aspect also would later on uh, determine some of the other aspects like diffusivity etcetera.